If you haven't heard already, Pinia is the new recommended state management solution for Vue 3. And the common use case for all data stores is the need to persist data. This gives us a way to save our state. So if our page reloads, a user leaves and comes back or anything like that, we can store the values of the user's current state and use it later on. A common use case for this is storing someone's authentication state or preferences. So when they come back to our app, they're already logged in with all of their set preferences. Similar to Vuex, persistence isn't built into Pinia. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a few different strategies to implement it. So first, let's take a look at persisting an individual value. So from a high level, the most common way to persist values is to store them in local storage and then use those save values to hydrate our store when our page loads. So to start off, I'm going to be using the user store that I created in my last Pina video. So if you're new to Pina or want to see how we got here, make sure to check out that video. But just looking at our store, it's using the composition API syntax. So in our state, we have a value called user, a computed property that acts like a getter, and then an action that changes the name. Then inside of our app.view component, we're just printing out our values, and then we have an input that lets us change our name. So the first thing I want to do here is add another value to our state and set const count to a ref with a value of zero. Let's make sure to return this from our store. And then inside of our app, since we already have our store and everything imported, let's just create a button that prints out the current value of count and when click increments store.count. So right now, if we come in, we can change our name, change our store. But if we reload our page, all of the values get reset to the initial state. And this is where persistence can come into play. Let's say for our example, we only want user to be persisted. So there are two parts. First, we want to use watch to detect when user changes. And when we detect a change, we want to write to local storage. And then when our store is created, we want to check if we've already saved something to our local storage and use that value as our initial value of user. So for that first part, let's go to our code and import watch from view. So we'll say watch pass in user as our first argument, our function that gets passed the value of user. And inside that function, let's just say local storage dot set item. We'll give it a key of user and then we'll pass in our value of json.stringify and then the value of our user. And then an important part for this is we want to add more options to our watch in the third argument by saying deep is true, meaning that view will track any deep changes in our object. And this is especially useful when working with larger states. So now that we're writing to local storage right after we declare our user ref, let's say if local storage dot get item user, meaning that we've already written something to user. And inside here, we want to set user dot value to json.parse of the value inside local storage. And that's all we have to do. So now if we go to our app, let's change our name, click our button a few times. And when we hit reload, our name will persist, but our count won't. So we can do something similar to persist an individual store or to persist our entire Pina state. So let's go to main.js where we create a Pina and we can copy and paste that same code. Except this time, instead of just watching a specific value, we want to watch our entire Pina.state. This will detect changes made to any of our Pina stores. And then in the function, we can use the key of state and set it to JSON stringify state. In our initial load, let's set pinia.state.value to whatever we set before. And this is an example of saving our entire state. But if we just wanted to use an individual store like our user store, we can just change this to pinia.state.value.user and we'll only be watching and storing our specific user store. And we already have a basic way to persist our pinia data. But there's an even easier version. If we look at the view use library, there's a great utility function called use local storage that does a lot of this work for us. So let's say like our first example, we just want to persist our user value. Let's delete all the code that we wrote and let's first go to our terminal and install at view use slash core. After that, we can import use local storage from view use slash core and inside our defined store, we can get persistence in just one line. We want to set const user to a ref and inside we want to say use local storage, pass in our key of user and then give it our default value if there's nothing found inside local storage. And it's as easy as that. We have that same sort of functionality. So when we refresh the page, all of that user information will stay the same. And the last way we'll look at to add persistence in view is using some of the plugins that the community has already made. And the one we'll look at is called Pina plugin persisted state. And to use this, we just have to run npm install, go to main.js, import Pina plugin persisted state, and before we tell our app to use Pinia, we want to say Pinia.use and then pass it in our plugin. If we want our user store persisted, all we have to do is add a third parameter to our defined store that says persist to true. And that's it. So in this video, we've seen a few different ways to add persistence into Pinia. Let me know which way is your favorite. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more of you content. And as always, happy coding.